you gotta do some post processing for these pieces in order to actually get it to fit into the hole that you are trying to plug this thing into. <laughs> that sounds weird, but whatever. Hello, welcome to Scratch 3D Printing. In this video, I will be talking about how to print stronger rods like these. Let's scratch to this topic. Okay, yeah, so let's talk about printing rods like these or just like something straight like this. So when I 3D print these, I usually just model them on Fusion 360 make a circle, extrude, fill at the edge, and then just print them. These keeps breaking off, like if you put something here and you bend it a little bit, it's gonna break. So I was like, how can I make these rods a little bit stronger so that it takes more force to break it apart? A long time ago, I saw a video of a person talking about how paper, if you just put it flat and you put something on top of it, it's just gonna fall. But if you bend it so that it has like a square curve on it, it's actually a lot stronger. So I was like, how can I apply that to 3D print part rods like these? So I went back into Fusion 360. I just made like a curve and then just extrude all the way through and then just make a copy around it. And then I get something like this, which if you look here, it's not that much of a difference. But if you look very closely, one is a circle. The other one is not quite a circle. It has like a star shape. I will show you how I did this on Fusion 360 after I show you some of these parts. So these are printed like this. And then yeah, some of you might say that, well, you can just print it laying flat down like this. So that it's horizontal and it's the opposite of bending it so it's a lot stronger. Well, I also did that. I print two, one of each, laying flat down like this too. And the reason why I don't really like printing rods like these is because of the fitting or the tolerance. You gotta do some post processing for these pieces in order to actually get it to fit into the hole that you are trying to plug this thing into. <laughs> that sounds weird but whatever. And so I did print this piece. It's a 5mm hole. Um, actually it's a 5.15mm, 0.15mm tolerance for this. I will show you the fitting right now. So this one is just the normal circle one. So let's try the fitting. And as you can see right there, it fits quite good in there. And we can still take it out. But what about the other one? Does it fit better? Does it not fit? Well, let's see. Look at that. It fits almost exactly the same. And now it's stuck in there. And yeah, I can still get it out. It fits the same, but it is a lot stronger. I will break apart this brim and show you that the tolerance for this piece is quite bad because of the extra brim. And the first couple of layers, it's printing flat, trying to make the curve up, and it doesn't do that well on 3D printing on any machine. It doesn't really matter which machine you're using. So these are kind of like the brims or the piece part that you are taking apart. And you gotta use like a deburring tool in order to get rid of this. That is a lot extra work. Sometimes you might take way too much off, sometimes you might not take enough off, and it's just a lot more work. So yeah, I am, um, and I think that is pretty clean. Let's try putting this in here. Yeah, it doesn't really fit. Oh my gosh, that, yeah. It doesn't fit because of the first layer. If you can see that, it's not completely round. This is the first layer, so it's printed like this. That's the first layer, and it's pretty flat. It's not round. You need to do a lot of pose processing for this piece so that it will fit into the hole that you're trying to model. The same thing for the other parts too. I think I took a little bit too much off um, and start to see the infill there. But we will see if this fits. Nope, it doesn't fit. It does not fit. Because of the first and the top layer that's making this not a circle, it's like a squarish circle, so it doesn't fit. So I don't have a scientific or numbers of how strong these pieces are, but I think I will get a really good feel for breaking this and using my hand. So this one is just the normal one, printed like this with just a circle, extrude, that's it. There's no additional work done to it. So I'm gonna try and break this piece and see how hard is it. It's so easy, look at that. It just came right clean off. That was like what, only like five to 10% of my strength. So that's really easy to break. Now this one is the circle one, same thing, but it was printing like this. So let's try breaking this. Okay, this one's still pretty easy to break, but a little bit harder and it breaks a little bit differently like that. So it definitely has a little bit more strength, 
but it also lacks the tolerance of fitting into the 3D printed parts that you need it. Well, why can't I just like, you know, do a solid infill? It doesn't really matter that much to be honest. Yes, it will provide more strain, but at the end of the day, it will still be similar. The material will just expand a little bit more and then it will eventually break. Okay, now this one is the one that I make it so it's like a star shape, but still five millimeter in diameter. I'm gonna try and break this. Oh my gosh, that's like a lot, a lot more force. That's about like 40% of my strength. Yeah, I don't have scientific numbers, but if you want to, you can try this for yourself and see the difference. And this one actually breaks almost perfectly in half, which is so crazy. <laughs> and yeah, it actually provides a little bit better strength, but not that much because it's still plastic. Okay, so let's try breaking the last one here is the star shaped circle, but it's printing flat like this. So let's try break this. Oh, look at that. It has more flex, but it still breaks. It has a little bit more strength, and the fitting does not fit that well. So, um, printing these parts flame flat, it's actually not the best way to do it, in my opinion. Let's jump into Fusion 360, and I'll show you exactly how I did this. We are in a new file in Fusion 360. So, what I usually do is just model a circle like this, 5 millimeter, and then just extrude it. Let's do 50 millimeters extrusion that is pretty much it sometimes i fill in the edge like this like by one millimeter and sometimes i chamfer the edge like this by one millimeter but that does not provide strength at the middle portion so what do i do well once i got this extrusion out i go back and make another sketch i use a three point arc and just made like a curvature like this just extrude this all the way through Let's do 0.5 millimeter fillet and now we can use the circle pattern tool and make it like this. So if we check here, it's still 5 millimeters in diameter and it's gonna fit perfectly into a 5.1 or 5.15 millimeters hole. And what you can add to this is um, add a chamfer at the end here by 0.5 millimeters so that you have this and the first layer doesn't expand and had a bad first layer, stuff like that. You can also fill it the bottom by 0.5 millimeters and it'll have this nice round edge and then you can 3D print this part out and it will actually have more strength than if you just print a rod but the other curves and edges like this if you print this it's not gonna be that strong compared to when you make it so that it has some dips and some ups and stuff like that well that is pretty much it with this video of me showing how i 3d print rods by having so many mistakes doing circle and it just extrude without adding any grooves and yeah i like doing this style of making rods because it's actually a lot stronger and you actually use a little bit less materials let me know in the comments down below how do you make these rods or do you don't use 3d printing for making rods because it's actually not that strong and of course we can use other types of filament to make a strong rods and stuff like that but and yeah that's pretty much it with this video and as always keep on 3d printing